So, uh, this video is going to be slightly different to my usual ones. I recorded a little drive. Uh, this is Arambal in North Goa. This road in particular is Pernham Road. Um, yeah, and I did a little ride along. You have to excuse the focus. The focus is... I mean, I was shooting this on an aperture of like 18, so I thought, okay, it's going to just be okay. But actually, you can see, like, it's not very focused. So I apologize for that. <coughs> Obviously, uh, my scooter there is nicely <laughs> sharp, but that's not what we wanted. So anyway, I just thought it might be interesting to show some people who sub to me where I live. And why, you know, just have a little ride around. Because for me, I see all this every day. So it's just normal. But I imagine to anybody back in England, in America, in Canada, in any of these places, it is quite interesting to see this stuff, you know? Because this is just everyday life in India. And this is Goa. You know, it's different from India. But anyway, here we are. So this is Arambal bus stand in North Goa. And yeah, that was a speed bump. <laughs> And this is like, if you got the bus into this place, this is where you'd get off. And this is kind of like the bus stand. So it's not very really beautiful. But you can get good samosas here. And you can get a cheap cup of chai up here. And you can sit around and smoke cigarettes. Until your heart's content. And that's kind of what people do. The traveller community who come here. This is a grungy little place to hang out. And yeah. So this is the school. Is Harmel School. Like, living here is cool, you know. One of the interesting things about living in <coughs> Arambal, this is a church up ahead as well. It's a very big church, St. Anthony. Patron saint of lost things. My mother's uh, favourite saint as well. Um, and there's many lost lost souls come to Arambal. So I like to, like to think that the lost souls have come here and St. Anthony is finding them all here. There's a bakery on your right, they do good uh, good food, <laughs> or good bread. Um, so yeah, the cool thing about living in Goa, in my opinion, well the interesting thing for me about this place in particular is that it's, it's a, a real transcendental hippie crowd. So this place here is in the 60s, like, and sort of moving after the sort of swinging 60s took place in America, came through to Europe. Uh, I mean, after things calmed down there, the energy really transferred over to here. And everyone was like, yo, fuck this. Um, and the reason it probably calmed down over there was because everyone came out to the east. So they came out to places like this. Um, they came out to Anjuna Beach, Kalangoot Beach, and these tiny small fishing villages. And go. obviously, the, the hippie trail was all through Nepal, Afghanistan, um... Yeah, so people were traveling, but Goa was a stronghold, and many hippies have always been here. Like, and it's just the, the traditions continued, and that's what really sparked the Goa tourism, especially in North Goa here, which wasn't connected by road at the time. This was a backwater. I mean, Arambal, what you're seeing now, was, you know, 30 years ago, was a backwater paradise. None of these buildings were here. Like, none of these concrete structures that you see were here. This is all new. Uh, all these roads are new like this was a small tiny fishing village uh, we lived on this road for a long time this season it's a popular little street so yeah like this place is cool you know in season time it's I mean it's a holiday resort actually is it a guest house? Yeah. no sorry how do you spell it? <coughs> Cabo Wabo Beach Huts. You've come this way? No, I came from. I just turned. Ah, so there's one way also this way, no? Yeah. There's many beach huts this side, but you can go this way, is a little bit of a. Okay, Off-road okay. drive, but yeah. you can also get that way. Yeah. Maybe it's beach side, right? yeah. Beach huts will be like this. I think is this way, yeah. maybe. Thank you. 
But you can, if you like the road, you can go this way, make a right and come out this side. Or you can go straight this way, over the mud path, down. Maybe so you have to get off one minute. And then you drive along and ask and there's beach huts all up there. So that guy. That guy was just asking for some directions and <laughs> to be honest, there's beach huts all over the place. I didn't have a fucking clue, but I was like, you know, maybe that way. And it turns out I passed the sign for that place later that way, so I was right, so I felt good. I sent him in the right direction. So yeah, like I'm just on my way to pick up some water now, basically, on the scooter. Um just yeah, this is the street where I pick up water from. Let's just fast forward this a little bit because this is quite boring here. So yeah, this is sort of the main beach road in Arambool. You'll have to excuse me the filming at this point. I'm sorry, it's not great. Um, later, I do a better job on the way back. So you can have a look at it there. So yeah, as I was saying, this is like a hippie paradise here. And I'm only showing you the main streets, you know. The, the beauty is on the beach and in the jungle and the people who come here really are the kind of beauty of this place like it's far from utopic there's a lot of issues you know there's a lot of um you know wherever you go in the world you'll find assholes but <laughs> you know people are up for it here you know people really if you're just into like a you know if you're into these things spirituality yoga um taking psychedelics and dancing to trance music then this is a really fucking fun place to be not that I'm into the latter so much or psychedelics I definitely enjoy but I'm not so much uh, a trance guy but there's plenty on offer here you know I'm just actually I came to this shop because I'm I'm looking to get some tops made to sell on Etsy and there's a tailor here so I was just looking here to um <laughs> I was actually buying a mask as well. just want to say at this point, like, <coughs> I'm extremely adverse to wearing the mask. Like, I hate it. Um, I mean, look at that. You know, it just looks it looks ridiculous, doesn't it? That kid wearing it. It's just sad to see kids in masks. But, uh, you know, the, the police here are fining people for not having them. And uh, I don't want to keep paying fines. And I'm not in my own country, you know. If I was back in England, I'd be taking more of a stand. But I'm in India and fuck it, you know, I just save the trouble. And to be honest, most of the time I just wear it on my chin. And if I see the police, I, I pull it up. It doesn't really bother me. But I am concerned that I'm adding to the imagery of terror by wearing it. I enjoy not wearing it as much as possible. So that's just a little disclaimer. So yeah, like we've been living here for a year now in this place. <coughs> and one of the most interesting aspects of living in a place like Arambol is that the... the the people who come here, the, the hippies, for example, are super liberal types. And I don't mean that like in a political sense necessarily. I I mean that more in like a sense of like, you know, people come here, we, they wear um, bikinis, they dance around to music, they take drugs, they smoke weed, they uh, they have orgies. <laughs> like it's like that, you know, like the hippies here go wild. And... Um, the people, the locals here are very conservative people they're very Christian they're very conservative the women are very uh, modestly dressed and the collision is fucking just madness when you put those two things together there's a lot of tension at times in the air because the hippies are going nuts you know like not everyone here is good old working on the land hippies who want to you know homestead and have a good life and yeah kumbaya some of the a lot of the hippies here just you know they have dreadlocks but actually they're they're, they're massive just drug taking narcissists so it, it's a crazy um <coughs> it's a crazy combination and sometimes in the season it really heats up because you'll have like ten thousand people come through this little place in a day and yeah it gets fucking crazy and often violence ensues like there's it's not unheard of for the locals to pull out the bamboo and give one of the foreigners a massage with it and that is a common occurrence so yeah i'm just taking off i just sort of organized with that guy to make me a sample of a top i have a nice top that i want copied to sell on etsy so you can check that out in my etsy store when i 
get that up and running properly again. Um, yeah, so this is the main street. <coughs> I don't know what else to say, really. Like, this is... The season should be kicking off here now. Like, when you see this, the season should be happening, but no flights are coming in anymore from Europe, from anywhere because of COVID. So... Um, yeah, so that's that's an issue. So the tourism is flat here this season. There's nobody around, and it's kind of weird. And it's going to be a lot less money for people. It's going to be a lot less work. It's going to be a big economic downturn. And, yeah, strange to be in such a... Norm like, we came here this time last year. The place was bustling. And I mean it. Like, it's always busy, but, wow... It was bustling with people last year around this time. This is when we arrived here a year ago, almost. Almost to the day. And yeah, so this is quite cool. Anyway, what I'm taking you now is like very much like Arambal Village. It's very back street, Desi kind of like Desi vibes <laughs> down here. And you won't, you'll have to come, I think. You know, if you just come to Arambal for the weekend, you'll probably not know your way around like this. You know, you might not even find this street. I've been to Arambal, like, coming ho here over the course of, like, ten years. Maybe four times on four different trips to India. But I've stayed for months, you know, at a time, each time. So I know my way around here now. But this is, like, yeah, this is back door Arambal. This is, you are getting a full tour of the back streets. So I'll stop here and I'll do a little chat. So yeah, you can check that out. So where I am in Goa is like, I guess like you could call this like a fishing, an old fishing village, right? It's Arambal, it's an old fishing village. And years ago, like, like they have government water here, but actually like mostly it's like well water. So like they used to have these things, see? This is called like a gut. Beach, yeah, you can go this way. Just left. left and then weave your way through. Okay, just follow left. Yeah. So this is a gut. This is like a big well, I guess, and this would have been like a public place to like bathe and to like... I don't know, to bathe... You know, it would have been like a public place to bathe and to wash clothes and all that kind of thing back in the day when it was like supernatural. Now it's all like government water, so this is basically just like a pond, like nobody uses this anymore. And there's wells everywhere. It's called a gut in India. I'll show you a crazy pond over here. I mean a crazy well over here where it's just like, you can just, like, once upon a time this would have been buckets, no? It would have been like people, like using buckets in these wells, but now it's like, Now it's like, ah. Ah. I have people looking at me because I'm not wearing a mask. See? This is a well, and like you can see it's just like covered in <laughs> pumps. And look at the wires. It's like super funny, isn't it? It's like that old school well, kind of like combined with this like new technology that's just, well, not new technology, but you know, like, industrial kind of technology. Isn't it? Have a look in there, too. Quite full. The well right now. Look at this, like, just pumps and cables. Pretty nice. I must say. It's a fucking a juxtaposition of times. <laughs> so this is like quite deep into Arambal village actually, where we are now. It's a nice guest house here. But it's quite grotty, it's quite gritty. It's quite gritty around here. Have I lost my new mask already? I just fucking... Lose masks for fun, I tell you. I'm really not good at this mask thing. I must have left that over here. Yeah, it's on the wall here. Cool. 
like I don't like face masks. I don't think they're healthy at all. But the locals here really don't like you not wearing them. Even though these guys having a conversation over here, they don't really obviously give a shit. Hey, your place? Yeah, I So now I'd sort my camera out finally and you all can have a proper look at what's going on. So the next ride along I do is going to be much better. Um, yeah, so check this out anyway. Yeah, this is kind of like driving back down the other way now, the main street. I've just cut through the back way to get here. Um, so yeah, like this is Arambal. Like this is where people spend months of their life selling wares and it's kind of, I don't know what it's, how to explain it it's like hippie mecca in a way for a lot of people it's like very it's a big meeting place you know in, in Australia you've got Byron Bay um, each country kind of has one you know in England I guess you could kind of say it's Glastonbury although not really um, anymore so much but <laughs> as a place but it's definitely got this transcendental vibe it's on the same ley line and I think this ley line runs through here you know it runs through um, Arambal it runs through Byron Bay and it's a transcendental place like you'll find a vibe here you know people are looking to go that step further in life and just kind of like taste exotic uh, they're willing to cut back on comforts and they're willing to yeah in order to meet people and have these cool experiences and um yeah so that's kind of that's it really like Arundel it's a cool place and living here has been fun it's been kind of <laughs> I don't know it's been up and down for sure sometimes it gets on top of you a bit like living in such a like it can be quite hectic especially in season time like there's so many tourists obviously we i'm a tourist of kind of i mean i do have a spouse here so i'm technically like part citizen but <laughs> yeah it's uh it does get full power all these shops you can see they're they're shut now but normally every one of these places is open selling spices anything selling everything bags tops t-shirts like like spices and all sorts of stuff every little tarpaulin you see here is like normally a shop full of these things yeah um <coughs> so it would have been amazing to have seen this back along you know back in the day when the hippie transcendental crowd first came here because gosh i mean now it's you know i remark on this before maybe a good time to say about it now but you feel an energy in a place like this, you know? In a place like Arambal, when I say energy, I mean people are bringing creativity here. People aren't being sucked dry by the system here. They've kind of found a loophole and escaped to a place like this. And it, they're able to... They're, they're able to, like, create and be, and you feel it, it's tangible, and it's very beautiful, and it, the music is great, the, the dancing is great, and synchronicities of full power here, and it's a really, it's a very high energy location, in my opinion, but that being said, when you find a place of beauty like this, like the hippies came, they planted the seeds, don't get me wrong, Goa's got its natural, raw energy and beauty, regardless of whatever hippies came along and fucking set of camp here, that's just secondary, but the, the hippies set into motion a 
uh, like an international crowd of people who would come here every single year, uh, year in, year out, and that has spread and now it's become like this like what started off as like an amazing backwater paradise is now all the energy is being sucked by the tourism the tourism is becoming you feel the energy fighting you know you feel the vampirism of humanity on this place and you feel the natural beauty being eroded and you feel the um as well the vibe being eroded um, and you feel this vampirism on the beach here you'll find 50 plus shacks on the beach all selling food sit on deck chairs and like doing live entertainment at night and playing loud music through speakers and it really has spoiled the vibe on the beach like it's really destroyed the atmosphere uh, yeah it's that's kind of shit because it used to be like an amazing place you know, like, it was quite special before. And, it, I mean, it still is. Like, now, after COVID, there's this, like... There's still a few people around who just didn't want to leave and are stuck here, stuck here, like, in quotation marks. Some people are literally just living in the jungle. Like, fucking... <laughs> no plan, just stuck in India with no money, which is crazy. But there's other people here and the beach is quiet and there's no shacks and you're like oh fuck this is really nice you know like it's it's a real taste of how it used to be but yeah you feel this same as like byron bay you know people all moved to byron bay in australia years and years and years ago and now it's it becomes you know the, the, the it just it's just the cycle isn't it of money and gentrification and uh but, you know, most people now, a lot of people won't come here anymore. Like, a lot of people say, ah, oh, the vibe spoil, it's gone, and it's not like it used to be. And, yeah, you know, it's kind of true, in a way, about Arambol. You'll still meet beautiful people, but it's past its zenith. It's gone past the point of, like, it's just reached peak commercialism and peak kind of, like, ugh, you just... You see the beach, you see the cigarette butts in the sand, you see the destruction of this of this tourism and what it does to the place and the the people even. It makes, you know, it can make locals greedy, it can make jealous of each other and it's very much divided the community in many ways, because many people would have preferred it to have been as it was, and then other people are like creaming off the tourism and you can't do anything to stop them, but they're the ones, you know, the tourists keep coming and you know, the the trash keeps building up and the, p the water keeps getting more polluted and the government aren't putting in enough, you know, like, uh, amenities. There's no public toilets here. There's no, like, yeah, it's pretty, pretty fucking crazy, to be honest. Like, it's not, um, you know, if you had a location like this in Australia, it would be totally, I'm not saying it's better, by the way. I'm not making an appeal to Western ways i'm just sort of highlighting the difference as a fact that it would be run very differently but i guess that's kind of in india's charm but i do wonder if the uh, you know we did reach a kind of peak commercialness and i wonder if you know the world breaking is kind of a reflection of that now you know it's kind of like whoa slow down everybody like, even though i think this is even though i think the pandemic's bullshit i do find it quite interesting that it came to this battle of energies you know the the source as you'd call it and i'm actually at a location called the source now but let's call it source energy people bringing the creativity and the commercial energy people coming to suck the energy and transfer it into money transfer that energy that beauty into cold hard cash so i wanted to come here to i don't know just have a chat this is like a banyan tree like a sacred tree in india and this is where, like, they did. This actually blew over. Like, this place is called The Source, right? It's, like, run by foreigners here in season time. And they do ecstatic dances here. And so everyone dances under this tree and gets into, like, really transcendent transcendental states and stuff. And this tree blew over in a storm this year after the season time finished. And... Everyone was like, oh fuck, the tree's dead. And everyone was really sad. 
and then all these foreigners got together and they raised a load of money and some diggers came in and they paid for it and they pulled the tree up again and replanted it and obviously it's a banyan tree it's like got this banyan tree's root you know they root from their branches they look like dread they look like dreadlocks um, I mean look at the way they grow it's just amazing how they grow it's just incredible how they I've never seen a tree that's so viney it's like a huge trunk but it vines and kind of joins itself you know that kind of fuses its vines kind of fuse and it creates this incredible like look of this tree so yeah so now it's here and it's got new growth like the leaves like you can see new growth here so it's alive and well so they saved it which is fucking amazing i think it's like a really cool thing when like man has raised it here you can see in this coconut tree because yeah because like this, this tree obviously gets support from vines. Obviously it's a big surface area, so when the wind comes off the ocean, it's that way, it hits it and obviously it can take a lot of wind. So I guess it braces itself with these vines. This kind of thing, see how it... You see, it's, that branch comes across and then these just drop and like plant themselves. See, it's amazing, isn't it? Like how this works. You can see there, it's just roots from its branches and it branches from its roots and it's a quite a beautiful metaphor really isn't it for how we should be you know we need to fly but we also need to be grounded you can't just smoke dmt and know the answers to the universe you have to fucking be grounded in your body and yourself and digest this information see there's another banyan tree over here with a nice a beautiful bull in front of it chilling so go say hello to this bull Hey bull. Wow, he's beautiful. He's licking the tree. Hi. Be thirsty. Beautiful bull. He doesn't look too happy to see me. The Goans will keep bulls, right? <laughs> they, it's such a masculine symbol. They they walk the bulls down the beach at night. Bah, 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 and they fucking you know, they hit them with this kind of whip kind of thing as they're walking down the beach, and it's crazy. It's like fucking how you just feel this big ball walking along and these goans behind, like, whipping them. It's quite crazy. Hey, bro. Hey. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Yeah, good. Small new shoots coming. Just a little bit. So here you can see as well. There's new shoots coming all over. Nice. Some... Yeah, there's a lot of new, new shoots, a lot of them. Some of the old, old, uh, old leaves, they are dying off, they are coming off. Yeah. But uh, that's natural, like. Yeah. And then new shoots coming again and... Awesome. Yeah. She, she lives to fight another storm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's no sign of like ants coming in or anything? I don't think so. Last time I saw some ants uh, I've been spraying anti-fungus uh, and um, like you can see here this, ah. this kind of stuff I've been spraying in the um, like the open parts yeah. so that there's no fungus coming inside yeah. and um, like different kind of uh, sprays I've been using yeah. um, but there is there. There was last time there was a tree expert here as well. He he saw that himself, but he said it's nothing serious. Ah, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So let's see how things are going to go. Yes. Wow. When I first saw it up again, for me it was such like a just a symbol of like strength. Yeah. Because seeing something down, then up, and even though it was bare, yeah. it was like just some kind of like you know like when a boxer. Yeah. gets knocked out yeah. and then he stands up again yeah and it's like they're like no no <laughs> but then he gets up and yeah. everyone's like stay down stay down <laughs> it was kind of like that for me you know like wow what a, like an amazing tree wow because the tree had to like 
I think like the tree in itself has like inspired so many people to even yes. act like this, you know? Yes. So it's like it says so much about it. Yes. Beautiful. Wow. It's a really beautiful story, bro. Very uh heartwarming. Yes. Wow. And yeah. And inspiring. thank you, thank you for these beautiful words. It <laughs> sounds amazing as well. <laughs> so yeah, like this is where I've been living, I guess. This is what I should be saying. Is this is where I've been living for like a year with my family in this little rainforest, tropical rainforest. I'm pretty blessed to be here throughout all the lockdowns and stuff. And yeah, I don't know what else to say really. Hope you enjoyed this little ride along. Um, I'll do more of this kind of thing, I guess, you know, because it's quite cool just to... For me, I drive here every day, but for a lot of people, I think they'll see this and be like, whoa, that's cool. That's a cool, interesting place. So yeah, uh, signing out from Ramble. This is Jack on the 11th of October 2020. Hope you're all in peace and peace out.